Good evening, friends. It's Wednesday evening again, and this is the time we devote each week to reflection and to prayer. Several years ago, we welcomed a group of our friends from our partner church in Russia to Paducah. As we showed them around our city, we drove them down Main Street toward the river and to the Fine Arts Center. As we were driving down Broadway, in the van you could hear them talking rapidly to each other in Russian. I asked Lucy, our interpreter, what they were saying, and she informed me that they were wondering if anyone lived in Paducah. That question puzzled me, and so I probed Lucy a bit, and she said, they don't see anybody walking, and they're asking, does anyone live in this city? You see, in their city, in Clincy, people are walking everywhere, walking to the stores, walking to work, walking to home. They don't go around in cars quite the same way that we do. You're always seeing people walking. And so our Russian friends, because they did not see people on the sidewalks walking, they were wondering, did anyone live here? We are neighbors to Clark School. If you were to sit out in front of Clark or sit in our parking lot and watch the students go in and out of Clark School, you probably would see very happy children going in and out, laughing, talking, skipping, jumping, running. And you might assume that there is not a need that any of those children have that is not being met completely. Yet tonight I am coming to you from our fellowship hall, standing in front of a bank of groceries that we share each week with some of our friends at Clark School. Each week we send home a bag with goodies in it, food. For some of our friends who may not have enough food at home to get through the coming weekend, we've been doing this for years. Sometimes it's hard to see the human needs around us. In fact, in our world today, we have become pretty adept at concealing the needs and hiding them from one another, and sometimes denying them ourselves. Today here at Emmanuel in our office, we met a special friend. He came in because he had a need, several needs. For the first time in his life, he's out of work. For the first time in his life, he applied for food stamps. For the first time in his life, he's behind in his rent. A couple of weeks ago, he had hip replacement surgery, and he was out today on a walker trying to get some help, trying to find some support, anxious for someone to pray with him even. Our friend came in. We listened attentively to his story. We offered him our encouragement. And yes, we did pray for him, but we did more. We did what we could in those moments to help him, to lift a little bit of the burden he was carrying, to assure him that we were his friends. And here at Emmanuel, we would be for him not only today, but as he tried to make his way through this very difficult time in his life. There are lots of folks in need at the present time, folks who are really struggling. This pandemic and its economic impact hasn't come to us all in the same way. Many of us have been very fortunate that our lives have gone on pretty much as they were in this very abnormal time. We've been able to work from home, and our paycheck has continued to arrive each Friday or each month, however it came to us. And other than not being able to get some things that we want from the stores, we've not experienced any significant hardship because of this strange time. Yet we have friends and we have neighbors who have lost jobs, who are no longer able to go to work, 
who are having a really difficult time now that this pandemic has stretched on into almost a year. And in the spirit of Jesus, when we have a friend, when we have a neighbor that is in need, we can't not simply say a prayer for them and send them on their way. We are, we are, we are compelled to do something, to give some concrete expression of our love. Tonight, I have chosen a passage of scripture from uh, John's letter to frame our time of prayer together this evening. From John 3, 1 John 3. How? How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. I find these words from that beloved disciple quite significant at this time. We often talk about loving, loving friends, loving neighbors, sometimes even loving enemies. But love in the abstract doesn't call for us to do anything but talk about our love, to have good intentions about what we might do if we encountered someone in need. But in the times we're living in now, the chances are we are going to encounter more people in need. More people who are in need and we are able to help. Yes, they may ask for a prayer, but if we have means, we must do more than pray for them. We must see what we can do to help them. Over the years, I've often said, God does not have a wallet. He does not have a checkbook. God depends on my wallet, my checkbook, your wallet, your checkbook to meet the needs of his children and our world. So tonight, in this time of prayer, we're going to pray that we are responsive, not in word or speech, but in truth and action when we meet a brother or sister, a friend, a neighbor in need during these times. So let us center ourselves and be quiet. Let us retreat into our hearts and let us pray in this time. Join me now as we pray together. Lord Jesus, first open our eyes to see the human needs around us. Once you have opened our eyes, open our hearts to respond to the needs we now see more clearly. Lord Jesus, remind us that you are a God of abundance and not one of scarcity. There is enough for us all. Lord Jesus, as we look at our salaries and our possessions, help us to discern what is enough, and help us to know when we have enough, for enough will do. Lord Jesus, enable us to choose to live on less than we earned or saved away or invested so we may have resources to share with our brothers and sisters in need. Lord Jesus, impress upon us that all our talk about loving our neighbor 
and all our good intentions accomplish nothing until our love becomes action. Lord Jesus, grant us the courage to ask ourselves what our willingness or unwillingness to share with others in need reveals about the love we profess for you. Lord Jesus, enable us to overcome our fear of being taken advantage of so we may respond with understanding and compassion to people in need. Lord Jesus, as we choose to share with others from our abundance to their need, remind us of individuals who once met our needs through their timely and generous gifts. Lord Jesus, help us to embrace the wisdom and the perspective of living simply so others may simply live. Now, let us unite our hearts in prayer. Lord Jesus, we recall the day you responded to the needs of a hungry and weary crowd. With a boy's lunch of five loaves and two fish, you fed thousands with food left over. May this miracle of your compassion remind us that you are able to do so much more with what we share than we are able to imagine. Grant us the faith of that young boy to give to you what we have to share with your children. Once we are aware of the human needs around us, may we respond with genuine love, with hearts overflowing with compassion, generously sharing what we have, trusting that you know what we all need and you will provide. Lord Jesus, remind us of your care for us as we count our blessings, may we be aware of how much we have to share. May we recognize our blessings as gifts from you. May the things we have not possess our souls. Lord Jesus, may we always be willing and prepared to clothe the naked, to feed the hungry, to offer a cup of cold water. For you will always provide enough for our brothers and sisters in need, and for us. Amen. In this time, let us be open-hearted, with open eyes, to see the needs around us. Let us, with open ears, listen more closely to what folks are saying around us. And as we conclude this evening, let us remember what the Lord requires of us, to love kindness, to do justice, and to walk humbly with our God. May the Spirit of God fill us and send us out into the world as messengers of care. Good night.